All right, I just thought I'd show you my equipment, my uh, super highly sophisticated, modernized filming studio is basically this. Just it's basically a selfie stick that's got a tripod base. Works fabulous, all it does is hold my iPhone, it tilts, it tilts, it turns, it does everything I need. You can make this a little bit taller if you want. And then my uh, Smarty Bob clicker. I think this is about everybody's got one of these. It's actually built in. It came with it. It goes right there so you never lose the stupid thing. And that may be the best feature. And then the last thing I'll show you is my microphone. This actually plugs into the base of my iPhone. I have an iPhone 15, so I had to buy a USB-C mic base so this actually plugs in and its power comes from the phone and then this is like the lapel mic or the lavalier mic whatever you call it it is self-powered and has to be charged so there it charges the same usb-c clips on when you turn it on there's the on button this light flashes green to let me know it's connected to the base Guys, like I said, that's really it. That's the sophisticated Hale Recording Studio. Good afternoon, YTPC. It is Friday after Thanksgiving. That makes it a uh, Black Friday. Let me check the garden clock. Garden clock said it's almost 2 p.m. here on the East Coast. 2 p.m. Friday afternoon, Black Friday. I actually check to see what time it is before I start my videos. But my brain is so leaky. I can't remember 30 seconds later when the camera comes on what time it was. So I think I got I gotta. Thank God I have a garden camera. I mean, a garden clock. I don't feel stupid, but it sure doesn't come across that way. But you never guess which pipe I'm smoking. You probably all said it at once. Of course, it's the mayor's song. I love it. Works great. Smoke it every day. Clean it most days, actually. My cleaning methodology comes from Mutton Chop Piper. He told us how to make a home, uh, home blend of cleaning solution out of Everclear and Frangelica. That's what I use, and it works pretty damn good. I know you're all just wondering, how does Dave clean his pipes, right? The most junior member in the pipe club. Hmm, how does he do things? Probably not said by any one of you. But that has never stopped me before, has it? I will put out a how I clean my pipe video. I actually, actually just record me doing it. And then you can all ignore it and feel superior at the same time. In my pipe is Irish Black Twist. This stuff is damn good. Tastes great. In one of my earlier videos, I told you I love it, but it's hard to light and keep lit. And if I would plan ahead and actually dry it out for a half hour and put it in the microwave, that would work better too, I understand. Currently, I'm just not built that way. I just drag everything out to wherever I'm going to say hi to you guys and then say, oh, shit, I forgot to dry it out, which is what I did today. But it's staying lit a little bit better today. Got the trusty Bic. We'll make it work. Clearly, I love stealing your ideas. 
So Jim over at CJ's Garage did Freedom Friday this morning. And then Uncle Willie did. <clears throat> Said he was going to do the same thing. Or he did his weeping, weeping Wednesday. So I stole weeping Wednesday and I'm stealing Freedom Friday. But I'm add, actually adding a touch of creativity to it. I'm calling it Black Rifle Friday. See what I did there? I'm here all week. I've been here every day, actually. That's crazy. I didn't think I was going to do that. So today will be a sit and talk. I'm sure Mr. Helpful will have some sort of mustard seed of nugget of knowledge for you today. Talk with you a little bit. And then I'm going to introduce my dogs to you. And then I'll end it, just in case somebody's not too into weapons or weapons or Black Rifle Friday. The last thing I'll do is append my review of my uh, Black Rifle. I say it like I own one. I don't. But today is the review of one of them. And I'll end my video with that. That way, if you want to jump off as that kicks off, that's certainly up to you. I understand not everybody's a gun guy. I'm a huge gun guy. In fact, some might call me a gun nut. And when I'm done reviewing my arsenal with you, you will probably agree. I have two gun arsenals now. One in Maryland and one in Wyoming. The one here is better. Maybe. You'll have to be the judge. Like a year from now, when we've had a, a year of Weeping Wednesdays and Freedom Fridays, you'll have to decide which is better. Well, I had a great Thanksgiving. You know, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and my niece, my niece-in-law, my son, my wife, and I. That was a family dinner last night. It was fabulous. My son helped my wife cook about half of it. And he's into trying the new things and new flavors and new sauces and new spices and um, did it great. Sister-in-law brought the turkey over. We cooked it here, but she brought the turkey and actually did a dry rub for a week on it. I'm so lucky. So this morning we got up. Pumpkin pie for breakfast, of course. Leftovers for lunch, of course. We put up our Christmas tree. In fact, my wife's in there finishing the ornaments right now. I'll show it to you. It's big. So for the last 27 years, we put up the same fake Christmas tree. But it was individually branched. It takes about four or five hours to get the tree up and the lights on. Another two or three to decorate it. I'll show you some pictures of that. This one only came in eight sections. It's brand new. We've never done it. It's pre-lit. It comes in eight sections. Took 30 minutes to put up. I'm a big fan. So we FaceTimed my daughter in from Sarasota, Florida. Actually had her on an iPad at the table with us. And as weird as that sounds, it was really cool. It was really fun. So we talked to her as a group, and then we passed her around. And everyone got to talk to her one-on-one -on -one for a little while. Very touching. Worked very well. I highly recommend it. At your next event, when somebody you love and close to you just can't be there, it's a great way to bring them in for 20 or 30 minutes. 
not as a replacement. I don't even want to try to claim it was as good as having her there, but it was pretty damn cool, and I highly recommend it. Man, that black twist tastes good. Wow. Staying lit really good today. Now I turn the camera back on, it'll go out, but it tastes really good. What do you want to talk about today? I guess my daily nugget today will be about the concept of momentum. Building momentum. So my mentoring students probably get sick of hearing about this concept. The flywheel. If you read the book Good to Great, he introduces the concept of this like 10-ton flywheel, and it takes forever to move it an inch. And forever to move at one revolution. So once you get it moving, it starts carrying a little bit of its own momentum and it becomes a little bit easier. And if you can keep your shoulder applied to the wheel and keep it moving, it actually gets easier and easier and carries more and more of its own weight to the tune of maybe a few years of pushing on it. It's actually moving under its own weight, and all you have to do is keep it moving. I like that concept a lot. That landed with me as I was growing up, as I was growing older, and as I was trying to make life decisions. I believe it is very hard to maintain a path towards success. If we are constantly starting and stopping different things, if we aren't building momentum month after month, year after year, over the course of a decade or two, in whatever path you want to select, whatever subject you want to talk about, I believe that holds pretty true. Whether it be in education, or your job, or your wife, or your kids. Maybe even your retirement, I don't know yet. I'm five years in, and I haven't changed a whole lot since I've retired. You've seen my biggest change is the Wyoming house. I still spend more than half my time here at this house, which has been our home for 27 years. Same wife, same kids. Same love of cars. I threw some racing in. We'll we'll do a racing vid. Sometimes I'll show you me all dressed up, looking like a race car driver, and I'll show you my race cars and some track time and our trip to Monaco this year. I'll put all that into a video sometime soon. Let's give you some examples. If you decide you want to go to school and you get a year in and drop out, that whole year does not build to your next year. It's hard to transfer one year of college to any other momentum building process. If you want to be an electrician, and you take up the apprenticeship, but you drop out before you become a journeyman or a master, it switches something else. It's another year or two that you've sampled something and then want to move on. Eventually, that kind of behavior has to stop. We just have to realize you'll always be at the apprentice level of life. I like this girl. We've been going together for a year or two. But I think I'm going to move on and try a different one. It's totally fine, but it doesn't build much of a life. And at 59, um, if I'm talking to anybody younger than 59, I think you would start to regret that sampler platter approach. To just about any subject. Jack of all trades, master of none. That didn't refer to just carpentry. 
That refers to anything. Our ability to have a meaningful relationship and work it through the difficult parts. My wife and I have had plenty of fights and I have given her plenty of things to be angry about and I'm probably a more modern woman would have moved on. But she says she ain't given up on me because she's got you know what 30 since 88 so that 35 years of training into me she ain't starting over with somebody else and i doubt if anything ever happened to her i would ever start over with anybody else either and people see us together and they want to know how we got here well the golden meadow that you would see my wife and I in now is on the far side of a long and arduous trip. A lot of dark forest, a lot of steep mountain paths that we had to get through to build what we have today. She can go do whatever she wants. She can go ride whenever she wants. She goes over to the horse farm whenever she wants. She goes down to Florida to see our daughter whenever she wants. It's a good life. And I get to go to Wyoming kind of whenever I want. I get to do my cars. I get to do this. All because we have a foundation of trust and love that um, I don't see a lot of people have in today's world. That was a bit of a relationship tangent now, wasn't it? My career was the same way. I started my company in 1994 as a one-man show, and I sold it in 2019 as about a 500-person show. And we focused on information technology in the federal market space, particularly on the dark side, all top secret or better. And once we got established there, we didn't move around. You know, we didn't try grass mowing or lawn maintenance or, you know, rocket construction or weapons construction. We stayed in our lane and stayed focused and got very, very good and quite wide in that space. Um, now, it doesn't have to be in a company. It doesn't have to be IT. It doesn't have to be the federal market space. That's not my point. My point is, from 1994 to 2019, for those 25 years, we never deviated off our path. We stayed building momentum. We poured money and we poured most of the profits back into the company and built a corporate philosophy, a corporate infrastructure um, that supported the people, took care of the client and made the business bigger and more profitable. We did that, my point being year after year after year, Literally for 25 straight years, we rarely deviated from that path. So the examples I have are pretty long term. Um, still on Wife 1.0. My kids are 20, almost 21 and 22 now. I stayed in the IT community from graduation from college in 86 through my sale of my company in 19. We've been in this house 27, almost 28 years. So there's a consistency to the foundation levels of my life that allowed me to achieve some momentum and success. I'm not saying that's the only path, by the way. I just wanted to give a little speech today. My mustard seed today is consistency, longevity, construction of momentum, month over month and year after year. And if you find yourself unhappy with where you are or unhappy with the progress you either met, been making or are making it may be due to the fact that you keep stopping and starting your momentum and I can hear the yabbits just make sure the yabbits aren't excuses Make sure the yabbits yeah aren't your shield that allows you to not consider what's really going on or what's really wrong.
I'm poor. I'm short. I'm old. I'm Jewish. I'm black. I wasn't born very smart. I tried that and it didn't work. I've tried everything and it doesn't work. Most of those are bullshit, to be honest. Most of those are things we hide behind. Hopefully ter temporarily, while we build up our confidence and our action plan, we kind of hide behind something. And then we need to step out from behind it and, and get to work. I was taught that we get something from the pain that we feel. I get something from feeling oppressed. I get something by feeling depressed. I get something from being lonely. I get something from feeling poor. Those are things we typically <clears throat> become addicted to if we're not careful. So let's wrap this up and get this video done so I can shut up and stop bugging you. Think about building momentum. Review your decisions this year. We're in the 11th month. Review the decisions you made this year. Did they build your momentum or stop it? Look at the decisions that face you and which way builds momentum and which decision will stop your momentum. Make damn sure that if you Make a decision that stops your momentum and causes you to start over in some endeavor of your life. Make sure that's what you intend, right? Uh, malice of forethought is what I'm looking for. Are you making your decisions with malice of forethought? Do you intend to make this decision this way? Don't let decisions get made for you. In most cases in life, no decision is in fact a decision. It's not might be the one you would have made if you'd actually put some thought into it. Build momentum month over month, year after year. And where you are a year from today versus today will amaze you. Where you are three years from today will blow you away. And where you'll be five years from today, you can't even see from here. Hope you guys had a good Friday. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. I'm going to end this video with life is good. Life is good. Talk to you tomorrow. All right, guys. I thought I'd introduce the dogs to you as well. Now, you've known Ranger from my Wyoming vids. And he is staying with us here in Maryland for a couple months for the holidays. But you really haven't met mine yet. So the white one here is Chance. He's coming up on 10. And this one is Echo. She's, she is three and a half. She and, she and Ranger, she and Ranger are almost the same birthday, actually. They're both COVID dogs. So Ranger is Sean's COVID dog. And Echo is my wife and my daughter's COVID dog. They grew up together. She's part of the reason he's so sweet. He thinks he's a golden retriever because of her. This one's a little bit proud. He doesn't like having another male in the building. But Chance is almost 10. He's super sweet. He's got some intelligence issues. He's not the smartest dog we've ever owned, but he's sweet and we love him. Echo's just about the sweetest animal we've ever met. We love her. And then, of course, you know Ranger. All right, enough little dog introduction. Just want to introduce you to all my beasts. Hello, buddy. Look at Chance out there wagging his tail. All right, enough about the dogs. All right, guys, it's uh, Freedom Friday, as CJ calls it, and you know, Uncle Willie. So I thought I'd do the same thing. But instead of being Black Friday, I'm doing a Black Rifle Friday. So what we have here is your uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 22. 
Some people are going to call it an assault rifle or sniper rifle. I'll just call it a 22 long rifle. So um, I've got it set up with a red dot. We'll show that to you in a minute. The iron sights are still on it. I've got a light on it, and I've got it suppressed. So it's fully suppressed. It's quite quiet, but I'm not going to fire it today. Um, I think it's very YouTube unfriendly to fire weapons anymore. And... It's neighbor unfriendly. I don't have neighbors too close. You've seen that. But I don't want to be the guy shooting guns around here and and starting a shooting war where everybody says, oh, well, if Dave's doing it, I can do it. And the next thing I know, every day or every weekend, I've got people shooting. kind of used to be that way. Okay, so you see the orange side. I've got it laid down. Both of them are laid down right now. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I can get you see through the red dot. I don't have the red dot turned on, but you can see it is not magnified. Um, it's also not loaded. I don't even have a mag in it. Um, and I just cycled it and fired, so I know there's no there's no round in it whatsoever. But this kind of looks like up close. Um, I will show you at the iron sights looking up. I'll show you with the iron sights up position it's hard Looks to do like this one-handed be honest with you i don't know gosh you know, i don't know if i can show it to you but i assure you you can use i can't do it you can see the iron sights right through the red dot sight ah didn't know that was gonna work so if your red dot goes bad you can go ahead and use this anyway so the other thing I want to show you about my weapons, or my weapons, is what does it mean to be ready? So for every one of the weapons I show you, every one, I have 10 mags fully loaded. These aren't loaded because we've been to the range. This one is loaded. 10 mags loaded. Extra ammo. A battery. An extra battery for the sight. For the light, sorry. An extra battery and all the tools for the red dot and all that goes inside a range bag and that range bag is labeled and this is ready a hundred percent of the time so you can see I have a lot more magazines I have some generic mags these are all OEM these are Smith & Wesson I couldn't find them for months so I bought some cheap ass so I've got 10 cheaps that I hope I never have to rely on and 10 actually original equipment. So anyway, that's a good range bag in my opinion. All right, everything in one bag, fully loaded and zipped, ready to go. It's actually, I could actually call it a go bag. Um, and in my prior life, you always kept your go bags ready to go. So that's it. Uh, what's Uncle Willie say? If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. I promise you every one of my weapons is go ready. Not sure what else to show you, but I think we'll go ahead and cut this off and I'll append it to one of my videos. But I just wanted to do a Black Rifle Friday or Freedom Friday for you. That's it.